I have one question for you. Got marks? That's the big question we're going to be talking about over the next couple of segments. In order to understand Marx's critique, you have to understand comparative advantage in neoliberal economics. Economic neoliberalism was a response to mercantilism. It believes in specializing in trade rather than making everything to support your own country and believes in the principle of comparative advantage. To illustrate what I'm talking about, let's pretend there are only two countries in the world and only two products and one currency, the dollar. This is a chart that illustrates what these two nations can produce for one dollar. Britain can only produce five bushels of food for every dollar and ten units of medicine for every dollar. And it's better at medicine than food and has an absolute advantage over France in both. France is lagging and can only produce four bushels of food for every dollar and three units of medicine for every dollar. Let's say each country needs 50 units of each and do the math. For Britain, to make all of its food, it costs them $10. To make all of their medicine, it costs them $5. For France, to make all of their food, it costs them $12.50. For them to make all their medicine, it costs them $16.67. So we specialize. Let's say that Britain makes all the medicine and France makes all the food. If you've ever had British food, you might agree with me on this. In order to get 50 units each country, each will produce 100 units of what they are good at. And look at the math. Britain, by doing all the medicine, comes to a cost of $10. France, by doing all the food, reduces their cost to $25. By specializing, each country saves money. Even France's costs went from $29.17 to $25, and they had an absolute disadvantage. Britain's went from $15 to $10. If a country specializes in that which, is, which it's good at, industrially or in terms of business or whatever, and then actually engages in free trade without the aspects of protectionism, they're going to end up saving a lot of money in the long run, avoiding losses, making money, enhancing their security. The list goes on and on. Now it's time to introduce that evil villain, Karl Marx, and tell you something he discovered that Adam Smith and David Ricardo sort of overlooked. He basically said that the system is indeed efficient, but that free trade always biases in favor of the rich and the powerful. How does this happen? Well, let's look at the impact of free market capitalism over the long term. Let's assume Britain's spending $10 a year and France is spending $25 a year. No, actually, let's be real. Let's make it $10 billion and $25 billion. Look at the numbers. Whereas in the first year, Britain just loses 10, France loses 25. By the time we get 25 years down the line, Britain is losing 250 million or billion, and France is losing 525 billion. So if we pretend that this map is a chart that graphs the previous numbers in terms of gains as opposed to losses, you can see that Britain makes massive gains. France indeed makes some gains, although moderate, but there's an increasing gap that should be of serious concern to France. So what Marx suggested is that yes, all the countries definitely increase when you engage in free trade. There is an advantage to that. However, not all benefit equally. You have to take the gap into consideration. So even though everyone makes money under capitalism, not everybody benefits equally. And this is a potential problem with the whole capitalist system, according to Marx.